Join me today on Walk With History as we do Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library and Museum from Springfield, Illinois. with history, museum professional, veteran, uh, historian. I'm here in Springfield, Illinois, and we're going to be doing Lincoln's museum, library, and a little bit about Lincoln's life here. His house is here as well. He's buried in Springfield, Illinois, even though he's born in Kentucky, he lives in Indiana for some time, but Illinois is where he lived most of his life, and this is what he felt like was his hometown, and that is why he is buried here. And what's interesting about Abraham Lincoln is most of his presidency is the Civil War. Most of his presidency, it'll of course start to evolve, but it really does evolve into equal justice for all people here in America. The turmoil that he faces during his entire presidency of trying to keep the Union together. and it depicts like Lincoln's early years and then Lincoln in the White House. So you have like two stories to tell. And this is the log cabin in Indiana in June of 1818. Now he's born in Kentucky, if you remember. He's born in Nolan Creek and then they move in Kentucky. His brother dies in infancy in 1812. Interesting, it'll tell the story of a man who's grown in poverty, self-taught, to become the greatest leader of our nation. So here we go, inside the 1818 Pigeon Creek cabin. But it's when he goes down to New Orleans, he takes a flatboat and may have seen slave auctions during that trip in 1828. And this depicts what an enslavement auction would have looked like and what Lincoln would have witnessed, families torn apart, husbands sold away from wives, sold away from children. And as I would not be a slave, so I would be a master, this expresses my idea of democracy. Whatever differs from this to the extent of difference is no democracy. Lincoln was very moved by seeing these things and it's gonna play a pivotal role in his presidency. So then it's about this time in 1840, he starts to court Mary Todd. Uh, Mary Ann Todd, and this is supposed to be in Springfield, Illinois. After moving here in 1837, he met an intelligent, articulate, ambitious, aristocratic Southern woman. And her lively wit and their mutual interest in politics draws them together. So this depicts the Lincoln-Douglas debates. Motivated by the Kansas-Nebraska Act, slavery, bleeding Kansas, right? Are these new states coming into the Union? Are they gonna be pro-slavery? This is all economic, labor. Is labor gonna be free and enslaved or is labor gonna be paid? And these are these debates that happen between Douglas, uh, author of the Kansas-Nebraska Act, and uh, Lincoln. So 
So this depicts uh, Lincoln's law offices in 1857. These are his two boys, Willie and Tad. He gave them a lot of freedom. Uh, these children would come into our office, take down books, empty buckets, coal ashes, pens, put them in a pile, and dance on the pile. And here we are watching him on the on the election train out there talking to the people getting people to know him know his face but really he's been in politics for 30 years you know representing Illinois and he's lost a lot so for him to win he's really is the dark horse winning but uh, Illinois is redeemed she votes for Lincoln it's kind of cool but it won't take long before the Civil War to be declared. This is the White House. On to the White House. Lincoln has been elected, the election of 1860, and now the Civil War will be declared, the, the Union will be dissolved, the South will break, and uh, we get to start the Civil War. I think Lincoln was loved during his presidency, and he was by some, but not by most. Definitely bared a burden of a lot of commentary and a lot of criticism. House on April 5th, 1862. Their 11-year-old son, Willie, had been ill for several days from typhoid fever, and he took a turn for the worse, and he dies while they're in the White House. And the grief and devastation for the family. And I have showed the Lincoln hat before uh, at the Smithsonian that has the grieving band on it, the grieving ribbon. Lincoln had kept this happened in 1862, but he keeps it on for the entire duration of his presidency because he remembers all the other Americans who are losing their sons during the war. The War Department Telegraph Office. Lincoln would spend a lot of time in there reading the updates of the war. This is Gettysburg. Most casualties in the Civil War, and then him giving the Gettysburg Address, and then burying all the dead, and then the President will speak for two minutes and deliver one of the most poignant speeches of all time. 242 words.
find this fascinating. You see how much Lincoln ages from the time he's elected to the end of the war in four years. Just how much this war has taken a toll on this man. You can see it in these pictures. He's reelected in November of 1864 and gonna pass the 13th Amendment in January of 1865. Probably one of the most important things he does with his presidency is pass the 13th Amendment. His last speech is April 11th, 1865, and Booth hears that speech, and Booth is, says to himself, that's the last time the president will ever speak. And the president will go on to Ford's Theater. Again, he doesn't get a lot of time to celebrate. He goes on to see our American cousin at Ford's Theater. After he's shot, Booth is going to jump down onto the stage, yell six Semper Tyrannus and run out the back. Of course, there will be a manhunt for him, but the president will die the next morning at the Peterson House across the street. It's a presidential funeral train. He goes through Buffalo. He goes through Erie, Pennsylvania. He goes through Cleveland, through Columbus, up to Chicago and to Springfield. February 12th, 1809, April 15th, 1865. We resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and the government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Those are words from the Gettysburg Address. <laughs> criticism in his lifetime and weathers all of that criticism to still do the unimaginable of keeping the country together and in the end he prevails. So I think it's just a great testimony of America in general and I hope that if you ever get a chance you make it out here but I hope our video does a very good job of showing that to you that without struggle there's no progress and Abraham Lincoln is the epitome of that. On to our next Walk With History. Thank you.